Welcome to the new weekly video podcast for the PBS series, E Squared. This exclusive online program will take you beyond the episode you just watched and deeper into the world of sustainability. We have to find a way to have a sustainable energy system which provides the energy needs of a growing world economy, helps the poorest of the poor get the energy that they need, uh, helps the rich countries to sustain energy use that they need, and at the same time doesn't wreck the atmosphere, climate, uh, and uh, all that depends on it, and that's just about everything. One of the things there's a lot of interest in right now is capturing the carbon and sequestering it. Essentially is taking a, a pipe out of the top of the power plant smokestack and then feeding all those waste gases, mainly CO2 and some methane, and then burying it in aquifers, in oil wells, etc. If you capture the carbon from a pulverized coal plant, the cost of building that power plant will go up by a matter of 75% more to almost double. The efficiency of that plant goes down by 30%. The cost of making that electricity is over 50% higher than right now a current plant. We need to try this, not simply to argue about things. Uh, arguments can go on forever. Uh, experiments can demonstrate things one way or another. It's extremely important, in my view, to test the technology of carbon capture and sequestration because if it does work, it provides a major piece of the solution. If it doesn't work, it gives us a major headache and we're going to have to be scrambling for alternatives. Emissions have grown to 1.6 billion metric tons annually and are still increasing. Major sources of the CO2 emissions are the 1,400 coal-fired power plants that supply 50% of U.S. electricity. In 2005, U.S. Secretary of Energy Sam Bodman announced seven partnerships dedicated to developing carbon sequestration. Before carbon sequestration can begin, extensive geological research must be conducted to ensure that CO2 will be properly stored without leakage. While initial research has shown promise, questions remain about how well this technology works and whether it can have any meaningful impact on carbon emissions. The question of what a reservoir is in the subsurface is one that people have a hard time visualizing. If we think of sediment that's being deposited, when that sediment is being deposited, you know, there are loose grains that, um, that make up that deposit. And you can notice within something like this, which is a series of, of you know, fairly coarse stones, there's a lot of airspace in between those individual deposits. If we scale that down and look at um, something that is, um, that is not so coarse but is sand, you know, if we have sand that's deposited, that sand also has a great deal of pore space within it. And if that pore space is connected, then it has very good permeability. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about sequestering um, CO2 in the subsurface, what we're looking at doing is injecting CO2 under high pressure down to depths that are below depths of about 800 meters. And what we're doing is looking at injecting it so that it fills the pore spaces within the sedimentary rocks that are present in the subsurface. And so these aren't rivers or caverns or you know, or lakes in the subsurface, we're looking at filling very, very small um, spaces that are present within a sedimentary rock. Right now we're emitting essentially 100% of the CO2 that we are producing through these different industrial processes. If we can capture some significant percentage of them and sequester a significant percentage of them, we're ahead of the game. Even if we can only capture 40 or 50 percent of the CO2 from these coal-fired power plants and inject it in the geological sites and keep it down there. This is a tremendous um, dent, if you will, in the, in the emissions. The key is someone's got to make a first step and show you can have real dramatic strategies, not a 1 percent a year change in our emissions, but 5 percent changes, the kind of stuff that California has written into law that New England's about to do, that Northern Europe is doing, that that's, I think, 
where we've got to set the example. Because then I think it's very easy for the developing countries to say, look, this is real, and we're going to lose that economically if we don't become green innovators. For more information about E Squared, visit our website at pbs.org. Thank you for watching. I'm Carl Bass. We're proud to sponsor this weekly podcast for this E Squared Energy Series.